OK, so moving on to Britain's second Prime Minister. Britain's second Prime Minister was Spencer Compton, the first Earl of Wilmington. Now there's not a huge amount to say about Wilmington because his tenure in office was very short, um, just over a year from uh, February 1742 to July 1743. Um, Wilmington was also not generally regarded as a particularly influential figure, unlike Walpole, who is generally ranked quite highly among Prime Ministers. Wilmington, on the other hand, is something of a forgotten Prime Minister, simply because the real um, he's generally considered a figurehead for the true leader of the government at the time, which was Lord Carteret. Um, but a little bit about Wilmington himself. He was born in 1673 in Compton Wynyates in Warwickshire, and when he assumed uh, the premiership in 16, sorry, 1742, he was 68 years old, which makes him actually the third oldest prime minister to assume the role after um, Campbell Bannerman and Lord Palmerston in the 19th century. Um, as I said, there's not a great deal to say about Wilmington because his term was very short, but basically this is information directly from the Ten Downing Street website. Um, so Robert Walpole's successor, Lord Wilmington, served only a brief term in the highest political office and is generally viewed as a stopgap Prime Minister. Lord Wilmington was first elected MP for I Suffolk in 1698, followed by East Grinstead in 1713. He served as Speaker of the House of Commons under Walpole and as Paymaster General. Uh, that's a job he got in 1707. He was also Treasurer to the Prince of Wales and expected to be rewarded by him with the position of Prime Minister when he acceded as George III, but Walpole outmaneuvered him and gained the office instead. As compensation, he was elevated to the House of Lords as Baron Wilmington in 1727 and later made an Earl. He served as Lord Privy Seal and Lord President of the Council under Walpole, but did not oppose the 1741 censure motion against his leader. After the failure of King George II to put the opposition in power after Walpole's fall in 1742, Lord Wilmington was finally asked to form a government. His time in office was undistinguished. He was indecisive and a poor leader, and from his position in the House of Lords, his direct influence was limited. His brief premiership was dominated by foreign affairs, including choosing to keep Britain in the War of the Austrian Succession and fighting the forces of Prussia, France and Spain. He died in office in 1743, only a year and a half into his term. And uh, when he was died, he was 70. He died in St. James's Square in London. Um, he was awake, he never married, and his alma mater was Trinity College, Oxford. So really, there's not a great deal to say about Wilmington. Um, there is, however, several cities in the United States named in his honour. For example, um, the city of Wilmington, Delaware, Wilmington, North Carolina, and Wilmington, Vermont. Now, bear in mind, at this time, uh, the 13 colonies were still British, so it was quite common for a lot of American place names to be Brit named after British statesmen. So, that's Earl of Wilmington, Britain's second Prime Minister.